My name is Peter Bosman. I was born in Ghana in Africa. Uh, I came to this part of Europe over 40 years ago. In 1977, I came to Yugoslavia to study medicine and, uh, and then uh, I, when I got to Yugoslavia, they sent me to Slovenia, to Ljubljana, to Ljubljana University where I studied medicine, general, general medicine. And uh, during my studies, I met my wife, who is, who is Slovenian. So after our studies, it studies took seven years, seven and a half years. And after that, we got married. And we were thinking of going back to where I came from, from Ghana. But then um, um, I started working here and people who who uh, I treated, they said, oh, Dr. Bosman, why don't you stay? Uh, you know, you're one of us, you know, you're know, you not different from any of our doctors, why don't you stay? So uh, my wife and I, then we decided, okay, we'll stay for a few years, then we go back to Africa. But then <clears throat> um, when we wanted to go back to Africa, my wife became pregnant. So we said, okay, we'll wait for another two years. And then after two years, my wife became pregnant again, and we said, okay, we wait another two years before we go back to Africa. Um, then after about three years, and we said, okay, I'm going back to Africa. And I told my patients I was going back to Africa. Then they wrote a petition asking me to stay. And uh, then my father was still alive in Africa. And he's a, he was also a doctor. And I called him and I said, look, uh, can I stay in Europe or should I come back to Africa? And my father said, no, 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 if you're happy there and you've started a life there, you can stay in Europe. So I stayed in Europe and I started working in a clinic here in, in the uh, uh, city council of, or, or the city of Piran. And um, uh, I worked in Piran for about 18 years. Then I got the chance to build my own clinic or own my own clinic to an, uh, in another city a little farther from Piran, Copa, uh, Cappadocia, and I bought a clinic there and I started working there. But a lot of the patients who had, had been treating here in, in, in Piran, they came with me to Copa. So I have a, you know, a lot of people from Copa, a lot of people from, 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 from Piran. During my, 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 my work here in Piran, um, I got interested in local politics and the Social Democratic Party at that time, they came to me one day and they said, oh, but Dr. Boston, have you ever thought about running for election? I said, oh, no, 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 you know, nobody will vote for me because there are no, there are very few black people here. Actually, I was the first black person here <laughs> and I said, there's no way, no way, no, they're going to vote for a black person here in, 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 in Piran. And they said, no, 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 you know, we've been doing a lot of of asking people who they think can be, you know, first a councillor, a council member, and your name keeps coming up. So in 19, 1968, uh, yes, uh, no, 19, no, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, sorry, <laughs> yeah, uh, I stood for the council and I became a council member, town council member. I was there for four years and then I decided that it took too much of my time uh, from working as a doctor so after four years I didn't want to get elected again but then uh, because I live here in in Porto Rose in Lucia uh, they asked me why, why don't you then become the president of this this area uh, and so I decided okay maybe that'll be or another political uh, a, a political um, thing to do so I became the president of the the area council, not the city council, but the area council, and I was there for four years. Then I decided, okay, that's enough of politics. I finished with politics. I'm not going to do any more politics. But in 2010, the youth wing of the Social Democrats, they came to me and said, Dr. Bosman, we need a candidate to be, uh, to, to uh, 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 contest for the mayorship of the Council of Piran, uh, the municipality of Piran. And I said, oh, look here, <laughs> there's no way, there's no way I'm going to be elected as mayor of this municipality. 
first of all, uh, I think at that time there were only four black, black people here in, in this municipality. Secondly, it is one of the most important municipalities in Slovenia. It is the most touristic uh, municipality in Slovenia. It generates about 20% of all the money that's generated in Slovenia in tourism is generated right here in, in, in our municipality in uh, Piran. So I said, there's no way they're going to let me become a mayor. And he said, no, no, if we do it the right way, uh, we are very sure that you can, you can, you can become the mayor. So uh, in, that was 2010, we did a very, very innovative campaign with the help of people, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of young people. And uh, I was elected mayor to the sur surprise of the then mayor who was also my colleague, he was also, he's also a doctor. <laughs> he was very much surprised. So in fact, during the first part of the campaign, because he didn't believe that I could beat him, he didn't even campaign. <laughs> and, and then, and then uh, 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 when I was elected in 2010, I was then interviewed by BBC, by, by CNN, uh, Agence France, everyone came here, even the Japanese came to interview me and to ask me, how did I do it, you know? Uh, I think basically my, my, my main advantage was this, that people knew me. I had been working here as a doctor uh, and uh, I was a popular doctor, uh, very much liked by people and I think that that helped me a lot. Uh, the fact that they knew me, the fact they knew that I wasn't uh, a, a politician, you know, a, 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 a professional politician, but an amateur uh, politician. So that got me elected in 2010. And uh, in 2014, after my first term, uh, I stood again. I was re-elected for another four years. So I was mayor into 2018. And then I said, it's enough of politics. I must go back to medicine and finish my, 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 uh, my uh, professional life as a doctor the way I started. So since 2008, uh, 2018, sorry, 2018, I've been uh, working only as a doctor. I've stopped all my political activities. I don't do any politics anymore. Even though a lot of people call me and they ask me, why don't I go back, back into politics? I, and I tell everyone, no, no, I've had a lot of nice experiences and I think that uh, now I should give the chance to other people to, 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 to do politics. I'm very happy with doing my medicine and uh, in a, about uh, three years time I'm going, I'm going to retire so I don't want to do politics anymore. So I was, my, my case was interesting in 2010 because I was the first elected black mayor in Eastern Europe. Eastern Europe, you know, which uh, didn't really uh, 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 have a democratic system in place. So people were very, very surprised that in Slovenia I had been elected as mayor, uh, as the first, you know, as a mayor. So I was the first black mayor in Eastern Europe, in this part, of, you know, in this part of Eastern Europe. And that's why I had so much interest from other 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 countries, especially as I said, the Western Western media, they came here to ask me, you know, about my how I did it, you know, why I think people voted for me, and what I, ex I expected or, or about that. Um, I think another thing that I should say is actually, I said I, I came here to study medicine, uh, but I had to, in fact, I had to leave my country as well because in in the 70s, in in Ghana, there had been coups after coups, and the military government was in power and I had been uh, organizing demonstrations against the military government. And so I had to, I, had to, uh, I was warned by people who knew my father uh, that, that it would be a good idea for me to leave the country because I could be arrested. And so I, I applied for a, for a scholarship and I managed to leave the country before they could arrest me. So it's, it's, it wasn't that I chose to come here because I wanted to come, but I chose to come because I had to come to Europe. Um, and uh, uh, I think that that's, that's very important uh, about why a lot of people from Africa, from Asia, from South America, they leave their countries, not because 
they want to leave it, but sometimes they have to leave it. If they want to, uh, uh, to live normally, they have to leave it. And I can tell you that a lot of us, we, in the early stages at least, we dream about going back. And then fate has, has plays its part. You know, I got married, I have my kids here, my kids went to school here. So in the end, I didn't go back. I go to visit Ghana, uh, to visit my, my relatives who are still alive, but I didn't choose to go back to live here, uh, to live there. A lot of people who come as migrants here, they make a life here for themselves. And uh, even though maybe at the beginning they think they're going to go back, then fate, fate uh, changes things and they, they, they stay here. A lot of them also do go back, uh, do go back to their country of origin, uh, where they came from. Uh, how is uh, to be a major? <laughs> It's a very, very difficult, it's a very difficult uh, 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 political position because, of course, you can't please everyone all the time. And uh, a lot of people are expecting you to do certain things uh, and uh, you can't do everything. Uh, first of all, there's not enough money to do everything, but people expect you as a mayor to to be uh, to do things uh, for them you know and I understand it you know you, if you vote for somebody you say I voted for him because I want him to uh, bring bring uh, 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 electricity to my my house for instance you know but sometimes we can't do it town planning does not allow us to do to bring electricity to your house and then you say oh he's a bad mayor so it's been a very, it's, it's very difficult being a mayor. It's very difficult to please everyone. It's very, ple it's very difficult to uh, uh, to balance all the different interests. Uh, and and as I said, our municipality is a very interesting municipality because of of tourism. Uh, on the other hand, it's a very very exciting exciting profession. It's it has its rewards. Um, I was very, very happy whenever we did projects for for people, for bettering people's lives, uh, and and uh, so so it, it has its ups and downs. On general, I'll say it's difficult, but it was very, very, um, very rewarding, and I was very, very pleased to be a mayor for eight years in this municipality. You know, what you said is so is so is so is so so good because. When I was asked, when I asked my father, when I asked my father, should I, should I stay, should I come back to Africa or should I, you know, go stay in Slovenia? And later on, when I started doing politics, my father said to me, he said, you know, a doctor, you, you, you know, you, you, you can help some people. As a politician, you can help even more people, you know. But then <clears throat> he said, politics is dangerous because even though you want to help a lot of people, there are so many uh, different interests that is very, very difficult. And that is, a, uh, you know, working as a doctor and working as a politician, I see that's very true. Um, we expect politicians to help a lot of people, but a lot of times politicians are, 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 are sort of hampered because of different, different political interests. Uh, and so it's, it's very difficult for a politician to help so many people. And um, before I became a politician, everyone called me, uh, they called me uh, Mr. Dr. Bosman, you know. You know, when, when I became a politician, ah, Mr. Bosman, <laughs> you know. <laughs> there was a different tone, you know. I'm now back in, 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 in medicine, I'm practicing as a doctor, and everyone starts calling me again, Mr. Dr. Bosman, you know. So it, being a, a doctor, I think that doctors, we have more, we are more respected than politicians. And even though a lot of people liked me, they didn't respect me so much, you know, as, as much as they respect me being a doctor. And I must, some people have even told me that. You said, you know, you're a good doctor, but you know, I didn't like it when you went into politics. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, uh, Eastern Europe, they have a very, very stereotype thinking about people 
of color. You know, people from Africa, uh, people from Asia, you know, they have a very stereotype that the, the people are not cultures, they have no culture, or their culture is very backward, or, or they think they, they, they're so different from them that they cannot assimilate or they cannot fit in, 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 in the society. And I think that it is also, unfortunately, uh, fueled by politicians. In Eastern Europe, politicians are very populist, very, very populist. You know, they want to be popular with everyone. They want, they, 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 they uh, uh, like to, to uh, uh, play on people's fears. If you don't know something, you're always afraid of it, you know. And they say, oh, you know, if these people come, they will, they will, they will, they will, they will take all our girls, for instance. You know, that's very basic. They will take all our girls. Your, 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 your children will not be safe when they're walking in the streets. Uh, uh, they'll bring uh, a different culture here. Our culture, European culture, will not be be uh, 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 will be uh, threatened. So I think that this is what's happening in Eastern Europe, uh, and there are so few brave Eastern European politicians who said no, it's not true. Uh, that different cultures, different backgrounds, they enrich the society, you know, and. Uh, you know, if you go to countries or big cities where there are so many different cultures, so many different peoples, you see how the, the city is so much alive. How people are, are, are getting to know other people, their culture, their way of living, their way of thinking, their food, how they dress, and it becomes a very, very uh, uh, enlightened society. So I think that the problem here is to find, in Eastern Europe, is to find brave, brave politicians who will say, stop. You know, these people who come here, first of all, they're coming because uh, they want to feel safe in an environment where they want to feel safe, where they can work, where they can contribute to also to the country. And then, uh, uh, and then uh, that we have nothing to fear from them, you know. We can learn from them and we can teach them and we can live together. Uh, you don't have to be exactly the same you know, uh, and uh, I always say this, that when I decided to stay in Slovenia, then I said to myself, there are certain things I cannot do here. And that's fine. I understand it, you know. I understand it because it would be, it would be foolish to do things that people do not understand here. It would be foolish to do it. So I say to my friends, my, 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 my African friends who, 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 who come to and ask people, how do you do my I say, look here, when you come to Europe, you have to, you have to lose a bit of your independence. You have to know how to, uh, how to uh, uh, um, include yourself in the culture of, of your host country. You have to know how, how the way they think, what, what, what is strange for them. You have to explain why do you do this in a certain way and so on and so on you know and i think that if they do that or if the, you, you do that as a migrant then it's much easier for you but then the host also must allow you to do that if the host doesn't allow you to do that then there's no way you can assimilate or you can become part of part of the society so the uh, uh, migration problem is going to be for years to come um, you know, now, 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 uh, the situation in Afghanistan is going to get worse, and you're going to see within the next two or three years a massive influx from Afghanistan. Climate change, a massive in in influx from Africa, from Asia. You know, because of of of, of people wanting to live a better life. So the, the, I feel that there are different ways to do it. First of all, is that countries, the rich countries or countries that can help, must help those countries that are financially or they're not so economically strong. Secondly, we should try and, or countries that can, who have the influence, and we know the countries that have the biggest influence, they should influence governments, local governments, to be more democratic, to allow more freedom in their countries. And I think thirdly, is that uh, 
we should also encourage more education. Young people have to understand, you know, understand about each other in the world, you know. Uh, I think that you'll be surprised how much I know about the history of Europe more than I know about the history of Africa, you know. But it's something that I, ha I had to learn and I had to understand. And so I think that that makes me also one of the, my strong points because I know exactly where Europe came from, uh, how Europeans came to be Europeans, how the different countries in Europe developed, uh, and 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 so I know I know also how to I I knew or I know how to communicate with Europeans, you know, and I know European values, you know, and I think that if, for instance, Europeans know more about Africa, then they you know they know the African values, you know. We in Africa, for instance, and I, I always say this, you know, that we in Africa, we, we have something that maybe in Europe is no longer, you know, and that is respect for the elders. There is no way, there is no way that a, a younger person will say a bad word about an older person. There is no way in Africa, you know. Uh, my mother, my mother passed away this year, but my mother always, you know, even though I'm 60 years old. My mother would, all, would sometimes quarrel with me and tell me, hey, Peter, you're not doing the right thing. And I said, mommy, I'm not, I'm not your small boy anymore. She says, yes, because I'm still your mother and I'm older than you. you know? So in, in Africa, we respect age. We know, and I think that, uh, uh, that that's one of the things you know, that maybe Europeans could learn from Africa uh, about respecting older people and treating all the people in, in, in a nice way and so on, you know. So it's just about education. What uh, means to be European? Or what means uh, Europe? I, I say this, that I'm, I'm, <coughs> I'm, I, I was born an African. I was a born an African. I chose to be a Slovenian and I'm proud of being a European. But I've never forgotten my African roots. I've never forgotten them, you know. Uh, and I, I, I go back to Africa very often, every two years. Every, this year I've been two times to Africa, but I've never forgotten. But all the same, I have now decided, or I chose uh, another country to be my country. And I have to respect those, the, the values of those countries. I have to respect the values of Europe, you know, and and I think that that is being a migrant or somebody who comes from another culture, that is very important. If you choose to be here, then you have to respect the culture and the uh, lifestyle of the country where you're living in.